It's your midweek motivation, because the view is live. Borderline shutdown. The president threatens to shut down the government unless he gets billions for his border wall. Will Democrats give in? History repeats itself? Trump's getting slammed for using tear gas on migrants at the border. But where was the outrage when Obama did the same thing? Plus, Queer Eyes Fab Five are giving you their survival guide for getting through the holidays happy. Hump Day Hot Topics are on the table with Whoopi, Abby Huntsman, Joy Behar, Sonny Hostin, and Megan McCain. Now, let's get things started. This is one of them. This is, <laughs> <laughs> is that a Christmas one? Yeah, this is one of mine. And it's, it's got so great. pockets, it's got a hood, it's great. <laughs> and you know, I love it because it's like I, I think about the incredible things that women get done, you know? Yes, right. indeed. And they, they seem to be able to do this. And I always wonder, well, maybe it's Mrs. Claus actually getting it all done. <laughs> you know, maybe she's actually okay. doing everything and nobody wants to say anything. <laughs> kind of like that busy fill-up conversation we had a couple of days mm -hmm. where you, women don't get the, the, uh, the credit, credit they that they deserve. Yeah. yeah. But so funny. There is a, you know, now we're going to go to the other stuff. <laughs> There's a December 7th uh, government shutdown looming, and the guy in the White House says it will happen if he doesn't get $5 billion for his border wall. This was the biggest campaign promise he ran on. You think he's going to shut it down? I, I, you know what? Let him shut it down. Shut it down. The, the, the Republicans did in 96, and they lost the election right after that. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and the Republicans are always saying they want smaller government. This is a good way to get it. Shut it down. He's threatened this, yeah. though, already a couple times this year. He has. And then backed away. There was one point where he was asking for $25 billion, remember? Well, that's the wall of the real cost of the wall. How much the wall will go? Well, there are disputes billion. about that. And the one where he said more. Mexico would pay for it. So the narrative has changed. But what this does, what he continues to do, is one, it riles up his base because they continue to want to hear, I'm fighting to build that wall. And then it also blames the Democrats, a message that he continues to have and one that I think he wants to keep going to 2020. A part of me wonders if he doesn't actually want a deal done so that in the end he could say, see, I fought for this. The Democrats wouldn't take the money. And here we are still. If you vote for me again, I will be the one to fight How for How much red meat yeah. does his base need? Is there, are there no vegetarians in this base at all? I just don't, I don't get this whole thing. You know, uh, at first he said Mexico was going to build the wall, right? He promised he Mexico to pay, yeah, pay, pay, pay for the wall. So why do we have, as taxpayers, have to pay for the wall, the first thing? And the second thing is, I mean, if you look at the statistics, since I think it was uh, 2010, more Asian immigrants than Hispanic immigrants have been coming into this country. And so for me, this issue is a racialized issue. He's concerned about black and brown people people coming into the country mm -hmm. as opposed to the other folks that are coming into the country. And, and, and that really bothers me because if he's giving his base red meat, then he's racializing this situation yeah. in my well, opinion. Well, yeah. The government shutdown has happened twice in 2018 alone. Democrats over DACA and the second shutdown was in February over the country's borrowing limit for the Texas and Florida, uh, Puerto Rico relief disaster. I will say more and the than one I mentioned. anything. Mm -hmm. What about the one I mentioned, 1996? I know, I'm just saying yeah. in 2018, the re recent time it happened. I hate maybe like <clears throat> Four degrees below terrorism, I hate government shutdowns. Because A, I think we're not electing these people to not work, number one, on a very basic level. Number two, it affects state parks. It affects military people getting exactly. paid. Do you ever seen the picture of the little boy trying to go to the Washington, D.C. Yep. zoo? Mm -hmm. He sees the panda and he can't go in. There are ripple effects all the way around. Get in and do your job. If I'm having a bad day and I disagree with you or something bad's happening, I come in here, I'm still on TV talking to you guys. Why do we have a different standard you know what? I don't for the think people he in government? It. He's just like well. a, a toddler having a tantrum. Shut it down, shut it down. He's not 
not going to do it. He knows he can't do it's it. It's been done in He's the past. I hate better. the precedents all the way around on both sides, clearly. Yeah. And I think it's very, very dangerous that if I'm not going to get what I want, we are shutting it down. Yeah, that's right. He, well, is, that's he is right, though, that it, 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 it's up to Congress. So people that yes. are blaming ICE, uh, the president obviously is the commander in chief and he campaigned on being able to negotiate. So he should prove that he can do that. But ultimately, it's up to Congress to figure out it the is. laws to fix the border. And we've been dealing with well, the problem of the border for decades. Well, they have figure out how to fix anything else. So I don't know why we think that's going to work for yeah. them. You and know, it just, it, 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 it's, nothing seems, it just, you know what it is? It just feels like, I don't know, everything to me these days is very animated. So it's like, mm -hmm. OK, we're here. We're going to do something. <laughs> hey, maybe we're going to go, oh, what the squirrel? OK, what yeah. are we going to do? Oh, I no. mean, that's what I I feel like is going on there. It's just driving me a little bit berserk. But then on the other side, there is this other story. The National Review is calling out liberal and conservative media for what they call flawed coverage of the Obama administration. Now, they point out that Obama had Border Patrol agents use tear gas at the border, too. And no one was interested in covering it then. What do you think? Is there, is there evidence of that? Because I saw a picture. I'll show you this photo. That I uh, that's circulating right now. These two little girls, shoeless, fleeing from tear gas. Do they have a photo like that when Obama was in? No, I, no. But the Homeland no. Security data does validate that that it happened multiple times, more than once a month, in fact, during the Obama years. Here's another thing I read in that piece. It said Backs over are stubborn things, guys. I mean, it said oh, over. Yeah, they are. Yeah, tell it us. said over. Oh, yeah, no. And we can call out, you know, BS on on both. To be honest, I, it, because of the president's rhetoric, I think there is we're it's shining a such a light on this. It's a big difference. Um, but in that piece, it said over a period of four months in 2014 under the Obama years, HHS allegedly placed a number of unaccompanied children in the hands of a ring of human traffickers who forced them to work on egg farms in and around Ohio, leading to a federal criminal indictment. And according to the indictment, the minor victims were forced to work six, seven hours a week, 12 hours per day. These are things that we don't talk about. Uh, well, the challenge is very good. Last I checked, President yeah. Obama is no longer Sorry. in office. Exactly. President uh, Trump <laughs> is in office. And, and this, he's but, destroying the country. And, and he's the, destroying um, the country. And this but Obama defense, you know, doesn't work for me. That's not to say using tear gas. I think it's immoral when you're using tear gas against children. But ProPublica just found that the Trump administration has secretly continued to separate kids from their families. The Obama administration they never, never did that. Did that. No. But I'm just you know, the ACLU says that kind of separation is unprecedented. So this whole, but Obama did it, but Obama did it. I don't care what Obama did. I don't care what Trump is doing right well, here, think, right now. I think it's strange to say that you don't care that it was happening before. Sorry, I'll let the applause line happen. But I, and again, not the butta butta, but I'm saying the coverage didn't even mention that this has, this has been going on since 2012. But neither uh, did the Republicans. The Republicans have never mentioned this. Listen, with all the well, stuff that... If you're that infuriated now, you should have been infuriated then. That's well, all I'm saying. Actually, what infuriates Thank you me... Very yeah, much, here's what infuriates me. The fact that... We knew Obama was the uh, deporter in chief. Deporter in chief. That was very clear. He deported more people than anybody. Yeah. Okay. He did it without saying those people. He did it without whipping people right. up yes. into hatred. That's the difference. So that when you say, "Oh, Obama," <laughs> thanks. So this idea of, well, he did it, well, yeah, he probably did. And we're aware that he was a deporting fool, if you read the statistics. Mm -hmm. He deported folks. I, no, everybody said, you know, hey, we don't like this part of it. But I also remember there was no help from Congress. There was no help from the Senate. Nobody was there saying, hey, we're going to stand with you. So where were the Republicans if they knew this was happening and they felt that it was wrong? I guess they didn't think it was wrong. They, where were they then? Did Democrats think it was wrong? I mean, we don't know. I get my. I, I don't know. This is the first time I'm. I, we don't I'm, I'm seeing all this. So and maybe, this that's, is my maybe that's the whole point of the conversation. Maybe what the problem is is let's point out the hypocrisy. And unless you're sitting in the president's seat, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, and you're faced with the challenges that they are today when it comes to the border and immigration, and you're talking to the experts on the border and they're telling you how to handle this, I think it's hard to sit on the sidelines and yell and complain about what's going on until you're actually in there. I will shoot. yell. I'm not defending the, the rhetoric about, right. about I'm just separating saying. children from their parents. You know what? Okay. But I that will. doesn't it doesn't mean I, I will. first of all we're talking about I don't tear think gas. Defending we're that talking about policy. tear gas. I wasn't talking about children being separated. And the other thing mm -hmm. I want to say is that I come on here a lot 
and concede when Republicans are making mistakes. I did it yesterday with a woman who just became senator of Mississippi. I did it when I was talking about Hillary Clinton. It would be nice if my friends on the left to once in a while conceded that they were wrong. It's, just, it's not that. Home, I'm sorry, wait a minute. Wait, 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 we're not that's responding not... to that. We're responding to the whataboutism that goes on. I think what it's Obama a fair did. comparison that you're not mad when Obama did it, but you are we mad when you did it. I'm been. calling BS on that. You want to finish this conversation? No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and this is The View. We'll be right back. <laughs> Later, facing facts, White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders gets fact-checked in real time for her climate change comments. But will it make any difference? After facing president. Okay, next. Movie star. <laughs> oh, baby. Just start rubbing on it. Pop stars. I just found out that Lady Gaga and I have the same gynecologist. I'm just sharing. It's true. It's, it's, it's real. It's not very pretty, it's but it's real. real. It's, yeah, she's seen it, been there, done that. So if you're Joy Behar, what do you do to celebrate 20 years on The View? I drink a glass of wine and take off my brassiere. What do you do? Well, tomorrow, we're saying, oh, Joy, with a celebration 20 years in the making. I was Barbara Walters' favorite. Just saying. You were. <laughs> tomorrow on The View, only on ABC. Still ahead, Queer Eye's Fab Five are showing you how to love yourself and love your life. Welcome back. Thanks so for like a second ago, we were looking for Abby's sister, who is here. <laughs> and we looked, yes, Abby's sister is here. So we looked, yeah. and we thought it was this young lady here. Because she kind of looks like Abby. Well, yeah. the great story is yeah. they tweeted hair. me yesterday, and they said, we're on our honeymoon, we're in New York just for another day. Our wish is to come to The View. And The View made it happen. So they're on their honeymoon. Aww. Aww. Is there. So Abby's sister is here, but she's back there. So hi, baby. It's a family. Uh, we just want to say hi. 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 <laughs> so this is so weird. I can only hear with a quarter of my stuffy. ear, and I can't hear sorry. anything on this side, and my nose feels this big. So I'm sorry. with that being said, yeah. yesterday, White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders shrugged off the disturbing climate change report that was just released, but CNN found a way to fact check her in real time. Take a look. And you have to look at the fact that this report is based on the most extreme modeled scenario which contradicts long-established trends. Modeling the climate is an extremely complicated science that is never exact. Uh, the biggest thing that we can do is focus on how to make sure we have the cleanest air, the cleanest water, and the president is certainly doing that and certainly leading on that front. We think that this is the most extreme version, um, and it's not based on facts. Oh, no. <laughs> Well, this is the most aggravating topic of all because it affects everybody. Yes. I think these people would rather have a billion dollars in the in the bank than ha breathe. I really do. Well, they'd rather have money than breathe. Do you think that Al Gore would rather have a hundred million dollars in the bank than breathe? Because he sold current TV Ooh. for five hundred million dollars to Al Jazeera, which is the great its gross domestic product is oil and gas. He made oil money Listen, selling, I and he's missed the climate this. change born himself. Mm. Number one. I happen so to please, know about this because no, my show I was canceled. To know about this Wait a too. second. I had a show on this current TV that was bought by Al Jazeera because uh, Al Gore sold it to them. So I'm no fan of Al Gore personally, but he's the, okay? He's the king I of climate change. Of him. But he's the well, king of climate wait. change. See, there's so much hypocrisy on the left with this. I'm sorry, Leonardo DiCaprio had 418 tons of CO2 last year. Every celebrity and person and advocate on the left, if you want is us Leo to start DiCaprio taking... Is Leonardo DiCaprio in office? He's, 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 an he's a huge climate change yeah, he thing. policy. He's not... You want to change hearts and minds? Stop the truth lecturing the Americans. I do take private planes. I'm not going to lie. Because I don't want to be on a plane where I got to talk to a million people when I have to get where I'm going. So, yeah, there are some things that I'm going to be guilty of because I do not, contrary to popular belief, I don't walk on water. I try, <laughs> but I know. So, yeah, there is a lot of uh, 
garbage there. But what's happening is we are dismantling things that have been put in place yeah. right. that were working. Yes. And I think that's the biggest bitch more than whether Leo did it or I did it or Kanye and well, uh, Leo does. Uh, well, and you do it because you have a, 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 a fear of fine that everybody knows. But this is my issue with this. It's a Climate change is not a left or a right issue. So to point out hypocrisy on the left or point out hypocrisy on the right. I have kids that are inheriting, you know, shorter winters, longer summers. They're not going to be able to breathe. The, you know, the water, the the water is, is heating up. That's what we need to be talking about. Not that Al Gore sold something or, or, well, or Leo, that Leo is I'm sorry. This, this is, is about so climate ridiculous. change. Please, please stop clapping so I can finish. Al Gore made an inconvenient truth. He's the biggest. He's the face of climate change. I, I hate Hands down, he made a movie that was wildly popular, won an Oscar. The United States is on track to make our emissions target for the Paris Climate Agreement. Most European countries aren't. So in the Paris Climate Treatment Accord, the Americans in the United States are meeting our limitations, but European countries are not, and there's no repercussions for that. So, so don't, we please should, don't sit here so and let your me. Because they're polluting. I'm saying we're meeting our emissions targets. The United States well, is meeting is there, European targets. Why is, there, why is he not. allowing mining waste to you be dumped into streams? You don't care about European streams. countries, but you care that America doesn't. I don't I, I'm an American. Let them worry about that. The theirs. problem is yeah. the oceans everyone contributes to, and that's the problem, is we can make all these efforts. I guess it has to start somewhere. My biggest issue with this is the report that Sarah Sanders is talking about is within the their own government. It's within their yes. own administration coming from right. their people. So to say that the facts don't matter, I actually think that the GOP is not going to have a choice but to evolve on this issue. Same with gay marriage, mm -hmm. because the next generation is going to speak up. When my dad ran for president, uh, he wouldn't have won anyway, but people said the nail in the coffin for him was when he tweeted, to be clear, as a Republican, I believe in evolution. I trust scientists on global warming. Call me crazy. They said that was well, it Well, you don't for trust him. the guy who looks into the sun to, to see the eclipse? Here's my <laughs> take on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one to trust. <laughs> If you look at the global politics of this, Paris was on fire over the weekend over this very issue because Macron is trying to tax average Parisians. Now, I believe in climate change as well. I also don't believe that when people like Al Gore and people like Leonardo DiCaprio with this kind of carbon footprint, that average Americans in between should be penalized or average Parisians do a little research on fire over the weekend, tear gassing protesters over this. But see, we, we want all, that to we happen all here. agree that, that climate change exists. Sarah Sanders sat there and lied to the American people she and said, she they weren't the based science. on facts. It, they, she doesn't believe the science. That's what people and should be very concerned this about. And they're running These people are running not Al Gore and not Leo DiCaprio. If you don't care, again, fine. But I'm just saying... I believe in climate change. I don't, it's not that I don't have a problem believing in science and believing in climate change. I have a problem across the board with the messaging from the left to average Americans. It's happening in Europe. It will happen here 100%. How about, how about, we, how how about right this? Issue. How about this? I see it as a left-right issue. It, 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 it actually isn't seven. a left-right issue because when the air goes to crap, Left-right people are, are breathing it, so, also, it's, so it's so everybody's it's, it's, it's everybody's thing. And so, and so, what I'm saying, what I'm trying to say, is the bitch about this again is we are on track to do stuff, but when we have an administration that is sort of unraveling all of That's the things it. that we've put that together. Obama we're did. meeting and the we're, Paris climate I, I understand, but I'm also looking at the air quality in this country, how it is shifting. And it is beginning to shift because things I see, I know, never mind. We'll be right back. <laughs> applause disorder. <laughs> I don't know what I'm hearing, and I can barely hear anything because my head is stuffed up. Yeah. I feel like it's this sick. big. Yeah. I know, well, I know. Tristan. <laughs> Tristan? When's the last time oh anyone God. said Tristan? Tristan. They make it anymore? Anymore? I don't even that, know if they make it anymore. Tristan, Tristan. Like, si for sinuses. when we were little, that was what you took when you have sinus issues. Yeah. You take Tristan. Tristan yeah. <laughs> Just nostrils and his whole thing. So, speaking <laughs> Of nostrils. <laughs> a lot of parents will praise their children no matter what. But Reese Witherspoon <laughs> says she agrees with Chris Rock's famous bit about being brutally honest with your kids. She admits she broke it to her child, Ava, when she was in the third grade, that maybe she wasn't great basketball. <laughs> but the question is, 
Do you need to be honest with little kids? Can't you wait till... Do they fifth, care? Why not wait till fifth grade to ruin their little dreams? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, I don't think it's... I would never do it. You don't no. tell kids anything like that. My not parents, until they're... You know, that's told, I teenagers. thought that when I was a kid, I couldn't sing, okay? I find out... It's the wrong key I've been singing in. <laughs> now I is sing. that what the problem well, has yes. been? Yes, I mean I was Damn in the, it. I was in these uh, groups and I was singing as if I was a soprano. I right. am an alto, <laughs> and I sing in James Taylor's key. Now they told me I couldn't sing, but I can sing in James Taylor's key. Yeah, that'll key. screw you up. Maybe that's donkey. my problem. I'm singing in the wrong no, key. No, that's, that's, that's not it. the problem. <laughs> that's my problem. I'm, I, that's what it you is. are not a great singer. <laughs> <laughs> you are a wonderful lawyer. You're a great bee grower thing. <laughs> a wonderful chicken lady. Yeah. But you're not a singer. I'm Me not. either. It's and I get superpower. paid to do it. I know. And it's bad. It's the yeah. superpower I've always wanted. But it's interesting because, look, nowadays you can't, you don't have to sing that well and you can be, you know, yeah. Pretty famous exactly. for the singing. Don't name names. So yeah, I won't name names. So we know my, who they my are. daughter loves to sing, and she'd be in the car, and I was like, oh. and I don't tell my kids that they're not happened? good at anything. And then what? She's happened? in the choir now, give, being given solos Thank and you. stuff. You see? So she got better. Maybe she should teach me well, about you know, the key. You know, Luca, my grandson, they teach him violin in his school. Mm -hmm. So I said, yeah, he has violin like the, yeah. the uh, what is that Japanese system they do? Oh yes, and uh, Suzuki. So, Suzuki. Yeah. So I said to him, uh, so um, you can play the violin. Well, he says PJ plays it better. So the kid knows already. You don't have to tell them. Yeah. They know. Yeah. They'll figure when you're it out. little, don't you know? Like, I was not picked in dodgeball. I was, like, always one of the last kids picked because I suck <laughs> at dodgeball. Were you the kid that they threw the ball out the all the time? The only sport I had. Or were you the one who threw the ball? I just was bad. No one wanted to play with me on the team of sports. <laughs> but the only sport I've ever been good at is riflery and rifles. That's it. That's the only yes. thing I can do well. Target. Target and shooting, ugly. skeet shooting, anything with a gun. Yeah. I'm very, I'm, my husband is better at skeet shooting than I am, which you would now have would like me to say. But you know when you suck. I sucked at every sport growing up. I was terrible. So Yeah, my parents, they put us in everything, so we would yeah. we would fail, though. Oh. Like, my sisters now, they put you in no, so you instead fail? of telling us we were bad, I think they wanted us to I try experience. it out. Yeah, experience. so my, like my sister is a concert pianist, and she travels the world oh, wow. playing. I couldn't even play chopsticks. Yeah. So you figured out, I, I told the story, I ran for office, and I was my only vote. You know, and it yeah. scars you for life. My parents aren't going to say, don't run for office because you're not going to be good. Yeah. They'll say, go after it. And then when you fail, you're That's like, That's what I do. I yeah, tell them that. Try you everything. You're yeah. great. That's right. That, I go with that. Great. Well, because you always know you'd be an incredible actress. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> People outside of me um, said it was a crazy dream. No. But in my mind, I always saw myself coming downstairs with all the great actors that I watched on, on television on a million dollar movie. Yeah. So in my mind, of course, yes, I always sure. Yeah. But you know, other people sometimes are not so sure about your dream. Did your mom yeah. push you to do it? Uh, she didn't push me, she but she you. but my mother said, Listen, you're either are or you're not. Mm -hmm. And the only way you're gonna find out is to do it. Yeah. So this is the thing that I believe. Let them try. Yeah. You know, right. they don't, my you know, they, there's family. nothing wrong with trying. It, it might no. work out for them. You know, yeah. you know, I was, when I was growing up, <laughs> nobody ever said to me, you can't do it. They never right. said you can't do it. So they gave me encouragement. They gave me an audience. They gave me applause. But they never got me an agent. Yeah, but this, this, this day. <laughs> this <laughs> one's got <laughs> <gone, laughs> so I'm sorry. It worked out for her. I an agent. That's all I needed. Yeah, but there's a difference between that and how they an EGOT winner sitting with us. I'm sorry. Well, Mary, you I'm know the, Let me tell you the funny thing about that. Funny thing about the EGOT is I had never heard of it until I did the show. Uh, the what's the show that Alec Baldwin was doing? Uh, Thirty Rock. Okay. Yeah. Until I did that, I, no one had ever heard this phrase EGOT. They're so few. I do. No, no. I believe it, it was something that was made up for the show. Uh -huh. I'll uh, tell you more about it. We'll really? be back. Uh, I yeah. Think oh. I think it was that. No. I don't, We all want more for less. Inspect. So, in case you actually wanted to know about the uh, EGOT thing, yes. yeah. 1984, <laughs> Philip Michael Thomas uh, brought it up as a way to describe all 
of the uh, awards. Wow. Then in 2009, there was an uh, episode on 30 Rock with Tracy Morgan, who was pursuing me. <laughs> because I apparently had an EGOT. Do they know and what didn't know the what, Well, no. it, yes. It is an Oscar, a Tony, an Emmy, an Grammy, Emmy and, a Grammy. and a Grammy. And you have to have won I, all, all of them. Yes. you did. Just, I, yes. And I thought there were only about 12 people in the uh, world that couple, have it, there's, right? There's, Maybe there's more now? More. Yeah, there's several 15, more. Well, uh, John, Legend John Legend just Legend became one. Yeah. Right, that's you know, right. Rita Moreno. Rita, Rita, uh, I think Barbara. Streisand. Uh, there's several. There are a lot of folks. Fifteen. 15. There's fifteen. Yeah, well, that's there's a, not a lot that's of folks. A small that's small 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 it's not a lot. It's a group. No, it's not a small whole group. lot, but, you know, there you are. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> do you know men and women have different ideas about what counts as... And then I say I didn't want to do this one. All right, I guess we're doing it. <laughs> Let's not do it. No, no, because we talk about cheating all the time. Oh, it's yeah. one we talk about all the time. <laughs> but NASA just made it... <laughs> Yeah, but well, we like cheating, too. Can you I know, yes, well, we cheat all the time. If you cheat NASA, does it count as cheating or up in space? I don't know. If you're up in space, is it, is it cheating? It is always cheating. Okay. Nothing makes Manny, me what you do. And we're back. So don't do it. I'm sorry. So, Nothing makes me happier than when you yell at the prompter about dumb topics. It makes me so happy on so many well, you know what it is? I don't want to talk about it either. We, we talk about cheating a lot. And so I just thought one of the things that, I, that interested me that you all were talking about was the fact that you weren't surprised that there were so many remotes in people's houses and apparently millennials are very freaked out that uh, their parents yeah. have more than one remote because I guess the millennials have one remote That's that does right. everything. It opens the door, it goes to the bathroom for you, it does all kinds of it's stuff. It's their phone. It's done for, but they don't understand why you have a lot of different remotes for your different televisions. Who cares? Apparently, <laughs> apparently <laughs> millennials do. I, love this I don't like so all much. the different remotes. I like one remote. Manny has booby-trapped our entire house. We have so many different remotes and then wants to explain to me how the remotes work. I mean, it's like, I don't want to know how the clock works. I just want to know what time it is. Just Turn the TV on. You it's almost it. swore. You almost, almost swore. I said yes. that. Turn the TV, TV yeah, because, on. Because nobody gives a, you know, about any of this. We'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Activist. It's clear the black life didn't matter. Found dead in jail. A coast-to-coast -coast call for action. Three years after Sandra Bland's death, does a new documentary reveal details that could change everything? Her family shares their mission for justice only on The View. Next. This is The View. The Queer Eye crew is bringing the fast. Plus, things get marvelous with Rachel Brosnahan and Tony Shalhoub. And Joy celebrates 20 years on The View. I was Barbara Walters' favorite. Just saying. You were. <laughs> this week on The View. It all centers around... Step no, out of the car. No, you don't have the right. Step out of the car. You do not have the right to do that. I do have the right. Now step out, or I will remove you. I'm going to drag you out of here. So you going? You're going to drag me out of my own car? Get out of the car! And then you. I will light you up. Get out! Wow. That was activist Sandra Bland getting arrested after a routine traffic stop escalated back on July 10th, 2015. Three days later, she was found dead in her jail cell. Three years later. The mysteries that still surround her death are examined in the new HBO documentary, Say Her Name, The Life and Death of Sandra Bland. Her two sisters, Shante Needham and Sharon Cooper, join us now. Thank you for coming. Thank you. So, Sharon, your sister Sandra's death three years ago sparked public outrage, mass protests in the country. Can you just remind everyone exactly what happened to her? Exactly. Um, thank you all for having us here. We really appreciate it. Um, Sandra was actually on her way to the grocery store. Um, she had just relocated to Texas um, to take a job opportunity with her alma mater, which is Prairie View A&M. Um, and just in the course of, quite frankly, living while black in America, which we all know far too well, um, she was pulled over by a police officer for failure to use her turn signal to change lanes. Um, and unfortunately, she was brutalized. Um, in the field and was taken to jail where she was found um, dead three days later. 
Shantae, you were actually one of the last ones, the last one to speak to Sandy in jail. Yes. We have a clip of that, actually. Let's play it. Sandy called me on July 11th to let me know that she had been arrested. I said, what are you in jail for? She said, you know, I really don't know. And she said, my arm, my arm is hurting really bad. And I could hear her talking to the guards. I wouldn't wish this hurt on anyone. Anyone. The emotions are still so raw. And you watch this and still so many unanswered questions. I want to point out that your family never even got a call that she passed away. It was a cousin that called and told you. What do you think happened? Do you think she took her own life? To be honest with you, we'll never know. Um, everything surrounding it was questionable. Mm -hmm. So we just will never know. And that's what hurts the most. Mm -hmm. And, and this documentary is so powerful. I watched it last night. It's so incredible. But one thing that struck me was that Sandy was an activist. She um, almost narrated the documentary through her blogs about um, racism and race relations and working on the, she wanted to work on the divide between the races. She talked a lot about police brutality. What was shocking to me was how could someone really so equipped to live black in Texas, so woke? Yes could end up being a hashtag. Mm -hmm. like, how, how could that happen? I think uh, why it happened and what we continue to see is there's almost this um, outrage fatigue, if you will. If you are living while black in, in America, you know what it feels like to have your life in jeopardy at any given point. And so to that end, we know what's going on. It is um, the lack of response, I feel, from those who aren't impacted by it, why it's still able to happen. There are people mm -hmm. who are of the majority who have a seat at the table, and so they need to activate their voice in a way that causes and ignite and spark for change because we know it's happening and when we've been on the front lines and we've been saying not only just that black lives matter but also too we're fighting to be seen as human and that is what this documentary shows and why it is so almost palatable if you will that sandy was able to show up and narrate a documentary about her life yeah such a lot of frustration has to do with the way officers and local officials handle the situation and what other questions have gone unanswered in this case? I mean, we don't we don't have our time of death. Um, I think that was very. We don't have our time of death. I think that was very important. Um, they never gave us that. Is the officer still? Where's the officer? Yeah, he's no longer working for Texas. Uh -huh. I don't know what he's doing right now, but he has. He was fired six months after she passed and there was no camera so he was on no. the payroll for six months for six mm -hmm. months and there was a perjury charge against him correct right? as i recall what happened to that and what happened with the perjury charge is that it was dropped and what you will see in a lot of these cases um Folks don't understand why people in the black community don't get excited about an indictment because an indictment doesn't necessarily equate to an, 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 an uh, conviction. Right. And so in this instance, when the indictment came down, it was a perjury charge, which was the minimal amount. Mm -hmm. I believe he could have served a year in jail. That charge was dropped with the promise that he wouldn't practice law enforcement in the state of Texas when, quite frankly, he shouldn't be a law enforcement official anywhere. So only law enforcement in Texas. Correct. Yeah, correct. That is correct. And my understanding is, Sharon, your family reached a $1.9 million settlement in, in your wrongful death lawsuit with the promise of jail reform and police de-escalation training. Mm -hmm. Because it's very clear from, from this case that I covered when I was at CNN that he did not de-escalate the situation. He almost escalated the situation, in my, in my opinion. What was that promise fulfilled, the training promise? I think it was fulfilled to a certain degree. Um, we were in a position where we were able to get an act passed that, um, in addition to some of the issues that we had with the jail, it was that there was monitoring that they said was done that wasn't done, and there was falsification of jail logs. So mm -hmm. some of those things were addressed in the Sandra Bland Act. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. the police de-escalation, which is the crucial point yeah. of legislation, was left on the cutting room floor. And so while it's disheartening, um, it's not a reason for us not to continue to fight, which is what 
we do because ultimately that is what we need in this country is we need our law enforcement officials to be trained appropriately yes. so that they can handle all situations that they encounter. Especially in de-escalation. Absolutely. Yes. Especially when you know that there are kids with special needs who are out there, right. young black men who, yes. you know, who are not responding to anything but someone yelling at them yes. and maybe you know so there's a lot that needs to happen yes. between law enforcement yes. and the citizens yes um do you feel people are listening absolutely good i think good. people are listening um i just hope they listen and activate yeah what's already in them contact your elected officials mm -hmm. hold them accountable and don't just sit at home and say, oh, that's sad. Mm -hmm. No, do something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Think about Call, it. Call, yeah. write, go sit in the office, do mm -hmm. something. Right. Sharon, One, three years later, how is the family doing? Is, is there any closure? And if not, what needs to happen for there to be some closure here? Mm -hmm. I think for us in particular, I think closure is, will always be in far reach, uh, largely due to the fact that we don't, we don't have the answers that we need. And I think at this point, the answers would come from the person who's no longer here to give them to us, unfortunately, which is my sister. What I will say is this, I think what needs to be done in addition to what Shantae already expressed is that those um, who have the power, who are in boardrooms, who have a platform, who have a voice, who can actually reach people, those are the folks who not only need to be an ally for change, because we talk a lot about allyship, but need to be an accomplice for change. Yes. You have to be willing to stir some things up, yes. quite frankly. You have to be willing to amplify, a amplify your voice Do exactly and speak what your louder. Sister did. Yes. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And we, of course, over the weekend just had uh, another life taken. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and so those are, that's a family who's just entered into this Misha Goss yes. of sorrow. Yes. yes. What can you s tell them yes. to help them through this? Because I, what do you, you've been, you know. Yes. It's, I want to talk to that family. Um, there's a couple other families I've seen as well. I, you can't remember because there's so many, right? What I want to say to that family and to the public is to grant that family and those who have lost their loves, want loved ones the same amount of grace and mercy that you would expect when you lose a loved one. There's an immense amount of unsolicited publicity that comes with it. It's a catch-22. And so respect their space. Yes. Respect their space respect their boundaries, and the best thing that you can do for them is to pray for them and respect their wishes. And when they're ready to come forward and have their story be told, right. let them tell their story on their own terms and in their own time. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Shantae, and thank, thank you, Sharon. You. Thank, thank you for having us. Say her name, Life and Death of Sandra Blunt, abused December 3rd. Do yourself a favor. This could be any one of our family yes. members. Watch this. We'll be right back. Yes.